pertinent question now is what will the human species look like in a thousand years mm what i i think we were pretty much the same a thousand years ago a thousand years ago yes a thousand years is too less a time for things let's stretch it to 50000 years sure sure so let's look at it logically what are the parts of our body that we don't really use anymore that much what do we not use so we don't use hair ah really because hair was originally intended for temperature control like you know. but currently hair does not have a lot of evolutionary advantage and if tomorrow everybody goes bald functionally will something change will you be, will you not be able to do anything that you're currently doing no so hair would be one um there is an argument for toes we don't really need them they're not anyway most of us are now walking around with shoes so th- whatever function of sh- toes there would have been is also going away because shoes don't have toes and we are able to function pretty much all day so why can't our feet look like toes what are the functions of toes earlier they would provide grip we were able to climb better all of that but now we don't need it so just thinking logically these would be some of the things that go away um a lot of us are now sedentary and we are sedentary as in we are not moving around so much our metabolism is not wired for sedentary life our metabolism is wired to be walking a lot more what if our metabolism changes what if our metabolism figures out that hey we actually don't need this level of metabolism and activity what if it slows down we might have changes in the way diabetes happens and blood pressure happens because all those are a result of a previous system where we needed much more energy what if you realize that a lot of the food that we eat is processed food so our gut might change the bacteria in the gut might change we might learn to eat and live with processed food better but all this is over a 50000 1 one lakh years also think we've reached that point in the story of the earth not just the human story hmm. but the story of the earth where science has suddenly started advancing way faster than it did until now oh yeah so what yuval noah harari says is that uh, obviously the next species will have machines incorporated into its own biology right which is nanobots as well as new neuralink style yeah. Uh, yeah. brain chips yeah i can see that happening Absolutely. I think that's a very obvious so evolution is now proving too slow because like we said natural evolution would take 50000 1 lakh years but when have we ever waited that long for anything like we will make it happen so this is where androids will come in but because this is a brain centric episode yeah um whenever you speak about the prefrontal cortex you say that this is the newest part of the brain yes uh my question to you is within the prefrontal cortex what's the newest part brilliant that that's a clue in terms of where the human brain is going yeah. so there are two parts that are developed the most recently uh again the, this is very very subtle because everything is new but there's one called frontopolar which is responsible for planning ahead so it's sort of projection visualization no the best word would be prediction how do i predict what will happen pattern recognition pattern recognition over time pattern recognition not just in a static place pattern recognition is me saying this is a this is a cup but prediction is me saying where will this cup be tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock for that i will need information as to what your house habits are where does the cook keep the cups and so if i am good at prediction i can take a pattern from the past and project it into the future and say in 12 hours this cup will be there the better i am at prediction the better is my survival this is where humans differ from animals which over 50000 years could possibly become a stronger sixth sense so yes so a stronger sixth sense could very well be the next stage of evolution you can call it a sixth sense this is 
simply better cognitive ability we are it's not a sense we are basically putting whatever we are sensing to better use we're processing all the data around us much better exactly exactly how an ai neural net correct. works correct okay. and so if you have the ability to incorporate ai into our prediction patterns we would be able to make even better prediction so imagine if you have an ai chip that is now able to process all of this and then if you ask me where will the cup be tomorrow morning at 10 am it might be instinctive for me of course it will be here in fact i might be able to tell you where will it be in one week based on previous patterns so that calculation ability might seem like magic today but it is simply information processing how better how well can i process information um so this is one part you said yeah. there's another part the other part is the part that is self introspective animals couldn't do this but there is a part called as a ventro medial prefrontal cortex which is outside the part outside is called dorsal lateral prefrontal cortex that is the part that is responsible for executive functioning executive functioning basically means logical thinking how do i plan my action so if i if you ask me to set up a chess board i will be able to plan or if you ask me to make chai i'll be able to plan the sequence ki pehle um, you know keep the utensil add water what is the sequence of action how do i plan it that part is the dorsal lateral prefrontal cortex logical thinking looking ahead inside that is the ventro medial prefrontal cortex that has the ability to think about emotions it's new animals can't do that we can do that we are able to look at ourselves and say ha huh, i'm feeling sad i'm feeling angry and i say we but i would say that a lot of humans can't do it because this takes effort so introspection looking at yourself understanding what is going on within you is a new skill and that is where spirituality comes in exactly here is where spirituality comes in because when one begins meditating regularly in life it's discomforting you're made to face your own truths and that's why most people stop meditating or your brain's overactive you can't like not even meditating they won't even journal they won't even think about their emotions they don't even want to address the fact that they are feeling something you're challenging the part of your brain that's at the brink of human evolution yes that's not everyone's cup of tea no today i believe that somebody who's capable of regulating themselves are at a better place than somebody who's not because somebody who can regulate themselves better i believe would be able to deal with their own stresses better which means they are at a lesser risk of mental health issues what do you mean by regulate themselves if i am upset what do i do with it now mm, okay that is regulation viewing your own inherent emotions as external to whatever's viewing those emotions correct so so far in human history the successful people have been the ones who could solve external problems better so thomas edison could invent a light bulb he is successful elon musk could create whatever tesla company or spacex successful and that will continue the world will still need human beings to solve external problems and all entrepreneurs will be rewarded but just as important as external problems are internal problems and so far the people who are good at solving internal problems was not given importance but the rise of mental health issues highlights how important it is to be able to solve internal problems and so in the future the successful people will be the ones who can do both solve internal as well as external problems and you will get importance you will get validation if you are able to sort yourself out hey if you enjoyed today's clip make sure you check out all the other clips we've uploaded on this channel you'll find a clip related to almost every single topic as long as you're willing to search for it